Hiya, and thank you for clicking this video. I, I wanted to share with you probably my favourite interview. If you're around the same age as me, if you think of the words Doctor Who, there's one face that springs into your mind. The curly hair, the toothy smile, the one and only Tom Baker. I think I started by saying something like, as good as David Tennant and John Pertwee and Patrick Troughton were, there was, in fact, only one. Doctor. Well, I have no idea because, of course, I didn't watch them. I've never seen anyone uh, doing Doctor Who. I mean, uh, except Patrick Troughton, you know, by accident, if I wasn't at football or in the pub. Right. But, um, so I've never, I didn't know what, what any of those people were, were like as Doctor Who. Although, you know, I know very well about Sylvester in his heyday as, uh, with the Ken Campbell Roadshow as a stupendous uh, visual and verbal comedian and had a huge success recently as the fool in King Lear on a worldwide tour with Ian McKellen. So, you know, they're quite formidable in different ways, but as for Doctor Who, I don't know, but I'll tell you this, and no one has ever failed at Doctor Who, have they? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, no one, no, we don't need to go any further than that. No mm. one, and so the new fellow, I've never heard of him, because he's only young, how would I have heard of him, and he's, you know, it's his first big role, and... Um, the boy from Northampton, and uh, I guess he'll be successful as well. Matt Smith, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Matt Smith. Y you've just returned to the role uh, as as part of these audio uh, CDs. I was listening to one with the with my boys at the weekend. Yeah. It must be good fun going back to that role, mustn't it? Well, it is. It, it is great uh, to to be recording something to do with Doctor Who again. But uh, you know, I've never left the role. You know, the role is Tom Baker, and um, I've never stopped being Doctor Who. And uh, uh, and so it was very easy for me to stroll into the studio, having prepared the script, you know, and marked it up, and absolutely sail through it. Mm. Uh, yes, it was great fun. It was the thing is, my memories of Doctor Who, which are still intense, uh, you know, were largely of the fun it was, and that's why I stayed so long. Some people think I stayed too long, and they may be right, but uh, I couldn't tear myself away from all this fun. You see, the laughter and the and the, and, and and the fun with the children and being a children's hero was a staggering kind of charge for me so you know i mean when i was walking along the uh, you know a road in 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 london you know coaches used to pull over because at a light some kid had recognized me in the street and whole coach loads of children would pile off uh, you'd see them tilt as they all ran to one side of a coach and um, and everywhere I went to schools and hospitals, you know, sometimes, uh, it, I mean, most of that was wonderful because, as you know, most children get better. And uh, but sometimes they don't always get better. And sometimes it was agony being uh, being Doctor Who, you know, because sometimes I was asked to join families at the bedside of unconscious children, you know, in the hope that I could talk them out of a coma. And that was that was very that was very stressful indeed it was agony and the people and of course I'd like to say that sometimes I succeeded but I didn't ever succeed and the wonderful thing was that the families never reproached me you know they mm. always thanked me for trying you know and I left them in their grief there um, you know with me you know I, that would happen when I'd been in a hospital seeing ordinary children with broken legs uh, but so it wasn't it was often very, very serious, yeah. Yeah. Do you know, you talk about children. I, I read your autobiography uh, a couple of years ago, now, actually. In fact, it was a signed copy of it. You signed it for me in older. The picture you paint of your own childhood is is, is, is both a beautiful and, well, very normal, but, but at times I, I got a great deal of sadness um, out of the words that you were writing. Was I right to, to do that? Say that again. I mean, did you, you found it, did you find it believable? Oh, yeah. There was a yearning within, you know, a, a sort of young Tom Baker. Yeah. Well, I think there's a yearning in all young people, you know. It's a yearning that comes from being imaginative and a yearning to be important, a, a, a yearning to do something splendid, you know. And that's... Um, children have that now, don't they? And it's yeah. expressed presumably in their preoccupation of wanting to be, you know, popular singers or dancers or get on television or whatever it was. I mean, all children, I think, have that. And I had it to a, an intense degree because I come from a very religious background. Mm. Did you ever dream as, a, as an eight-year-old that, that one day you'd be walking down the street and coaches would pull up at the side of the Well, road? I couldn't have even dreamt of that, but I used to have other dreams, you know. About, I used to have dreams of being a, a, a hero. I used to have dreams of being a martyr. Um, and uh, all the splendid things, you know, about religion. You know, because religion doesn't really ask 
questions. Religion always, um, <coughs> religion actually gives answers, isn't it? And uh, the poor are consoled by being, by the religious hopes. And uh, and this was a big part in my life. And of course, I was always in the church, and I was always hallucinating because of the incense. <laughs> uh, you know, I was sniffing incense from about the age of nine. I mean, I was on about three tablets of charcoal a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was having visions from an early age. <laughs> Are you still a very religious person? Tom? Oh no, 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 I'm not. No, all that's got all that's got away from me. Yes, but I'm very. I read about religion, you know, and I also read about atheism. And uh, and um, but I don't take much notice of God these days. Now I'm more interested in the devil, although he never returns my calls. But that's very common with old men. The devil's uh, only interested in young men. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody warned me that this would be a surreal experience, Tom. Well, <laughs> what, what are you up to these days apart from uh, recording Doctor Well, Who I'm again? just doing the promotion for this. I've been doing quite a lot of promoting for this because I've enjoyed it so much. Mm. Um, but, you know, most of the time I can choose, and people ask me to do things, and most of the things I get offered now, I don't mean that they're stupendous things, but I mostly turn them down. I've got a dog now, you know, and, a, and I'm happy at home with my wife, and I've got a dog, and I walk in the woodlands, you know, and I have bonfires, and... And then I think back in between the bonfires, I think of the stuff of nightmares, which is this script we're talking about. And I think of Rula Lenska. I think of Rula Lenska a lot. And um, <laughs> and and I think of Susan Jameson. Yes. <laughs> you, you you say to me that you you didn't watch any of the doctors bef before or after you really just just your own. Uh, are you familiar with with John Culshaw's impersonation of you on, on Dead Ringers? Uh, when he John Culshaw rang me up once, uh, in, somebody betrayed me at the BBC and gave him my mobile phone number mm. and apparently it was quite funny you know when he rang me up and I didn't know you know pe people don't take me seriously so when someone said I am the doctor I thought that sounds familiar <laughs> I, thought, I said that's very odd I thought I was the doctor um, and you know the, the audience is li like that a lot yeah. but I mean I was glad that he was able to make a few quid doing an impression of me I mean um, I suppose it's rather flattering to have people doing impressions I once saw at a masquerade in Boston, I think, uh, the curtain went up and there were about 50 young men uh, dressed like me with long flowing scarves and big, ha and big hats. And walking around in a very peculiar way, I said, who are they? What are they doing? And they said, they're doing impressions of you, Tom. And I said, do, do I really walk like that? <laughs> uh, it, it was incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely amazing because you're in America. Yeah. They, 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 they love Doctor Who. I remember one time... Uh, there being about 600 mostly women for some reason I think they were ex-nuns or something like that and uh, and I, it was at the airport and I was at a hotel at the airport and they were waiting for hours to see me all these women and I only had about an hour and a half before my flight but it was at the at the airport so it was possible so I rushed down to see them you know and they all went mad and the air conditioner had broken down so they were all sweating and um, and I felt so sorry for the first woman who looked very distraught and looked as if she had no private life at all. And I was so sorry for her that it brought out the Francis of Assisi in me and I picked her up and embraced her and said how delighted I was to see her. And the guy who was with me said, oh, Tom, I heard him say, Tom, Tom, what have you done? And it went like an electric shock. I heard all these women say, you get embraced and kissed. <laughs> and there I was, I was stuck with kissing 600 sweating women, <laughs> which is a very slippery business. What's been the best thing that you've ever done in your career, Tom? Because there's so much, I mean, I, I remember you in Blackadder and Li Little Britain most recently. What, what, aside from Doctor Who, what's been well, the best Well, I don't know, I mean, I th aside from Doctor Who, you know, it's all pretty ordinary, isn't it? I did enjoy Blackadder because... Uh, you know, everybody laughed at it, and, mm. and I had wonderful. Ben Elton had written me some terrific lines in that. Didn't he? Do you remember all that stuff? I used to keep meeting people, you know, who'd say to me, "Say to me, Tom, you have a woman's hand," and so I'd say, "You have a woman's hand," and the fellow would pass out with laughter. Yeah. So, I mean, it was incredible, wasn't it? The Blackadder thing. That was the that was the most famous comic thing I think I did after Doctor Who. But uh, mostly, you know, I'm I'm happy to settle for having been Doctor Who because that was the high spot of my whole life, and and now here I am, 30 years later, promoting the stuff of nightmares as if no time at all had elapsed. That's the beauty of listening to it as we were at the weekend is that it seems like no time at all has elapsed, and yeah. Mike Yates is, is is back and and you're back. I, listening to it, Tom, I felt like I was nine years old again. 
Well, isn't that amazing? That, uh, so you see, that's a wonderful compliment when someone is made to feel young again. But that's mm -hmm. what nostalgia does, you know, when you meet old or hear old heroes, isn't it? I mean, that's why fine songs and fine recordings endure so much, you know, sort of... You know, the thing is about when you're an actor and you're in television or radio, whatever it is you're in, in a way, you see, some people forget this, it confers a kind of immortality. Because, you know, James Stewart or Judy Garland or Fred Astaire, they're not dead to us. You know, we never knew them anyway. Hmm. Who are we? Because all the work is there. It's recorded. You know, what would I not give to hear my dear mother's voice or see her in a moving picture, you know, at a little garden party or making a bonfire for me or something like that. Whereas nowadays, in your generation, your children's generation, their whole lives will be recorded and they'll be able to lie in bed when they're 85 and, uh, and they'll be able to say, let's have a look, let's do, let's, let's have a look at life, Lily. And they'll press a button and there they'll be, you know, being christened by some mm. vicar and then they'll tumble on and the, the courtship and the weddings oh it'll be all there and that can only happen we think of course you know to actors can't it and no one not theater actors who remembers john laurie who was so funny in dad's army no one remembers his king lear but everyone remembers his we're doomed mm. and so much such is the power of, uh, of, of vision you know Tom, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Okay, and I, I'm so glad you like the stuff of nightmares, because I'm very keen on nightmares, you know. I mean, imaginatively speaking. What's your worst nightmare? <laughs> My worst nightmare is actually waking up and discovering that this was actually a dream. <laughs> oh, God, that would be terrible. Wouldn't that be terrible? <laughs>